It's that time of the month again, although for my UK viewers, hey, it's still Friday because this weekend is a bank holiday, so no work for, well, those of us who don't have to work on a bank holiday tomorrow indeed. It is time to say goodbye to the Tinko Pure One S12. And when Tinko first messaged me, this was the first machine they ever gave me to show you lot and to review, the tagline on their email was, this is better than the Dyson V11, because that's what I had at the time. It was around the time it did its first warranty fail. And yeah, I, I'm afraid it's not brilliant. In fact, I would almost say, having used the A10 Hero prior to this, that, that is slightly better. This is not brilliant, it's not bad either. I shall attempt to explain all this to you as we go through the video, show you what the filter is like, and it's not brilliant news, and everything in between. And then we'll see what corners vacuum I'm going to use for the month of May. So, let's have a look. Yes, hello, my vacuum cleaner chums, how? are you today? Yes, this hasn't been too bad in terms of using the machine. I mean, I've, I have used it before and I formed my opinion of it then and having used it now in my own house, I used it more at my mother's the first time, but using it more now, my opinion hasn't fully changed. It's just a little bit flawed, really bless it. Some of it isn't its fault, some of it is the fact that it's probably more meant for the Chinese, Japanese, Eastern Europe market than it is Eastern Europe, or more about Asian market, than it is for your average British home. So we'll start with the good bits, which is this floor tool. This floor tool has been absolutely brilliant, although it is quite filthy being a white floor head. It certainly does show the muck. I haven't really looked at this all month. Nothing's really got caught and yeah, it is a little bit grubby. All the dirt that flings back sticks everywhere. You don't notice it so much on a black, grey or other coloured vacuum cleaner really. White does show it quite badly. And of course I should probably have wiped this down every week and so on and such forth but I haven't been Really, there's stuff swirled around the edge. And unlike the heroes, they have the brush file motor down the middle. So you can't, well, you can do it better than you can on a Dyson, which goes all the way to the end. But cleaning it is going to require some disassembly, I do believe. Brush roll is covered in fine dust, bless it. But bar that, the two rows of soft bristles and the one row of hard bristles have done very well indeed. I don't think I can take this off. Well, I can take that off of there and that will unscrew on there. So, yeah, that's that's a thing. Oh, look, I don't think I've actually taken this off before. It's also got the felt external bit, which I, I can attest does work very well indeed. No chunks of fluff building up in there as it does on other cordless vacuum cleaners, not to name any names. Oh, which specific angle do I have to put this in at? Uh, ah, there. Marvellous. So yeah, that's cool. The wand is, well, it's the wand really. It's been fine. Bit big, bit clunky, but yeah, it, it, it does wandy things quite well. This is the main problem say problem a lot of this is probably just going to be my opinion but when you put it on and it turns itself on and then drops right down into its lowest mode which is where all the headline battery figures come from as you can see the number isn't plummeting terribly fast the problem is you get pretty much no airflow or suction on that mode especially in the state this is in now, which I'll show you in a minute. It's been a week and a half since I've actually emptied it or cleaned it. 
And I, what I had today, in fact, I wonder if we can reproduce it. Cleaning up after Little Phoenix, trying to keep it on its lowest economy setting. Stuff wasn't being sucked out of the wand and into the machine on its lowest mode. And I'm sure that's great for the average paper home with, you know, dust. But as soon as you try and do stuff like this, yeah, there you go, look. Oh, did you pull that off camera? What a wally. It hadn't actually picked any of it up. That's, that, that's worse than I thought. Wait for it to drop, that's the key. You turn it off and it stays in there. The dust sensor that changes the iLoop technology is very, very what's the word? hard to engage. I, I barely have it up the volume at all, even if things are quite dirty. I, you think that rice bouncing across the sensor would do it quite a lot, but no, it doesn't. So what you end up having to do is you turn it on, because you can, and you stick it on max. And the problem with sticking on max, A, is that the battery percentage literally drops right down. But it's the only way you can really get it to suck anything up, is to put it in full-on battery rinsing mode. And it'll finally get the job done. But, saying that, a lot of it also has to do with how clean you keep the filter. Take this off. Now I shall I shall caveat that by saying that nothing has really gotten through. And the oh, I can't fully show you because it's so teeny tiny and enclosed, but the post motor filter is also quite clean. Certainly no dust to speak of inside of there. So yeah, I guess it depends on how you view your filtration. Yes, nothing has come out of the bin. But the problem is, and this is after a week and a bit of use, filter is still doing its thing. And I don't remember the A's, you know, the A10 and the A11 that we played with, being quite this bad, really. Now, I guess I, I should be using the filter cleaning tool more regularly. But as we all know, all that does is takes the fine dust from one filter and puts it straight onto the other. So what I have been doing is just grabbing the MBV 190 and giving it a clean off and putting it back in. Now if we change the filter, not going to empty the bin yet, we have instantly more suction. It hasn't been saying it's blocked at all, even with that filter. And that instantly is a lot better. Although, again, all the fine dust that was in the bin now goes on to the filter. I think this has been tweaked a little bit. I'm sure the newer ones must have a thinner shroud. You know, smaller smaller bits and bobs. But, you know, I can't deny it picks up all the stuff. Talking of the shroud, it does like to get wrapped around. If I'm doing a particularly fluffy clean, that just gets covered and then this will pipe up saying it's blocked but yeah I I reckon they've tweaked something around here on the newer ones this is quite an old model 2019 ish and you know, the newer ones are newer I think they've done something because yeah you basically should be cleaning the s12 every couple of times you use it which I'm never a fan of I mean Maybe I'm just too used to bagged vacuum cleaners that you can leave them you know, for months and months and months. But saying that, there's a chunky bit there. There you go. It does pick all the bits up. The headline grabbing, you know, it will get the stuff that is very good, but when you look beneath the surface, can't imagine I'm going to be influencing the S12 that much. The eye loop's quite cool. Look, we've already knocked it down 10% just from this little bit here. But I left it a little hard. Let me show you the app and the numbers on there. Of the app, here we are. It seems to auto-close itself after a period of inactivity. And that's just my 
Android VM, but we'll fire it back up again. I can't say I really looked at this that much. Look, I'm using it for two hours, 32 minutes. I The app isn't really something that's a key selling point for me on, you know, a vacuum cleaner. It's even worse on the mode of on because you sort of need the app to change all the settings, but we only ever use it on Macs. So whatever, the Floor 1 s has had a lot of use, but again, it all says it on the machine. All you end up with is just many, many messages, which I did clear off, so we're fine. I don't know, we did 832 dust. The numbers are just meaningless. Total dust, 1.66k. 1.66k what? I, 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 yeah, I don't quite get it. It's also full of little grammatical errors here and there because it's all Chinese translated into English. Bless them. But yeah, we have you know batteries at 89%. It's never told me to clean the filter on the machine at all and etc. Cleaning the dustbin. Oh, we can reset the dustbin usage time. I didn't know you could do that. And of course, the hilarity being that you can watch YouTube videos on the app whilst you clean, which is just a gimmick that doesn't really do anything for me. And I could never tell you to buy this machine based on that. But it's there. It's cool. Who knows? We might add in more iLoop technology stuff to this in the future. But for now, there is my Tinker. You can't even use it because you can change the settings, but obviously you can't turn the machine on with the app. So yeah, this has just been sat here on my Unraid server for most of the month. I have had a bit of downtime because I put some new hard drives in it. But yeah, for the most part, it's just been happily sat there regardless. Yeah, right. App rubbish over. Let's change and see what we're going to use for the month of May. My cordless vacuum cleaner of choice for May. We're going simple. We're going green oats. We're going the GSC 50. A machine that isn't going to clog its filter up anywhere near as much from my experience. A machine that costs a lot less money, a machine that comes with the worst mini turbo head I have ever seen. So we're going to leave that right there and just not touch it at all. But yeah, I've, we've used the GSC40, of course, which is crippled really by its terrible, terrible brush roll. This one at least has a nice stiff head on it. I don't quite know what Greenlight were thinking when they decided to make this worse by having a floppier head. I did mention it on my email to them and they didn't really seem that fussed about it. This head is the head you want because it has a nice stiff row of bristles and a nice, well, two soft rows of bristles. It, it must be an Asian thing to have more floppy than hard. But yeah, this is going to cope far better with fine dust and dirt because it just seems to. I'll check this has a filter in it. Sure do. Yes, there we go. They're all nice and spotless and clean. Every filter that we have used so far this year has gone through the washing machine. Absolute treat. The tin hose will do whenever I get down to washing it up. Why are you not going on? There we go. So yes, these are no exception. The GSC 40 filters went through absolutely fine. So will the get on there, man. There we have battery as well. And immediately this feels more powerful. Purely because it starts on a higher setting and then stays there. It isn't like the Tinko that goes right down low in order to say it lasts a bajillion hours. Dyson always terrible for that as well. Always look for the asterisks in the battery claims for any cordless vacuum cleaner folks because it's always, you know, tested like this on low for everything. This will be the same really. It will be, it will claim the world, but only if you don't use it for cleaning floors and you use it on its lowest setting. I'm not going to get the wall mount out for this, I've decided. I'm gonna not have the floor stand at all. I'm just going to keep this charger 
around and plug it in where needed because I do have a wall dock for this. You know, it came with the GSC 40 and it's okay, but I don't think there's much need at all. Oh, perfect. Just what a cordless vacuum should be. Cheap, cheerful, fix the bits up. I bet this doesn't need much rice because again it's going to be a fair bit more powerful on its default setting regardless. Let's check. Oh, I did pick it all up in one pass, but it's all in the bin. It's all there. It's got it all once and for all. Fantastic. Well, of course, you can smash it into high. Which I probably will do really. Battery runtime isn't much of a problem for me because my house is small enough that it doesn't take that long to clean it up anyway. And I do believe that yes, this one stands up by itself. This is I think the only well, the 40 probably does it, but this is this is the one of the only cordless vacuum cleaners I have that will stand up you know, of this design, I guess, you know, there are other types of cordless vacuum cleaner around but yeah of its design this is about the only one that will stand up nicely fantastic obviously it will charge like this as well so on to the second green note i only have two they don't seem to have any more models out and if they did they'd probably be almost exactly the same anyway i might have to have a look but for now for May, I'm going to be using this and I think having a pretty good time. I like this when we last used it. I think it's a fantastic price to performance machine because it is ever so cheap. 120-ish quid, I think. I best check that now just in case it's rocking it up in price. But eh, I haven't checked for a while. So yeah, there we go. From an expensive Tinko to a cheaper Green Oats, and I think I'm gonna have a bit of a better time with this overall than the expensive Tinko. So which did you prefer? Let me know in the comments below and until the next video, I and then at the end of the month this will see you soon. Bye bye.